uh, exchange ideas during the lunch break. I assume the link will be open during the whole conference. So maybe you can also use the uh, the lunch break to ask each other questions, etc. I was wondering if Rosalind Oketch is now online. Um, yes, yes, I am. Hi, Rosalind. Hi. Hi, Rene. How are you? Fine, thank you. And yes. I assume you will take over for the next session. Then. I'm taking over for the next session. Thank you. Okay, your floor yeah, is thanks. yours. Yeah, okay, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Rosalind Okech uh, with Memorial University in Newfoundland and I'll be taking over this third session just before the lunch break. Um, so I'm not sure whether our presenters, all the presenters are in the room, Saima and group, uh, Victoria Ann, Nzo Sirai, Sonam, I'm not sure if they're here. I'm here, I'm Sonam, I'm here. Victoria is there. Okay, uh, Saima? Saima? Sonam, Sonam, I'm Sonam, I'm here, sir. Okay, you're Sonam, okay. So I'm looking for yes. Mzo. Mzo. Mzo is here. Mzo is here, perfect. Is Saima there? Saima, our first presenter, are you there? Or Sarah, I think they're in a group. Okay, so maybe in the interest of time, uh, we'll just start with those who are available and, um, and then hopefully Saima would be able to join us before we complete. So I think Victoria, you are up next uh, to start. Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes and uh, I would request that you mute your mics and then we are going to go through all the presentations first and then we are going to give some time for question and answers. If you have a question, you could put it in the chat and I will read it. Uh, and if there's sufficient time, you could ask it uh, yourself as well. So Victoria, the floor is yours. Victoria, your mic. Victoria, your mic. Victoria? Um, so welcome. We can, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. I was just getting into my PowerPoint. Um, while I'm waiting, I'm going to say welcome to South Africa. Today I'll discuss virtual reality, saving South Africa's tourism. Now, COVID has literally devastated the tourism industry all over the world, including in South Africa. Many industry, many tourism sectors has been affected. For example, the aviation industry has been affected as many um, airlines are forced to either um, file for business rescue or had to increase their prices. The accommodation industry has been affected as many famous um, tourism Accommodation firms had reported a loss in tourism revenue and occupation levels. The festival and event industry has been affected as many famous events and festivals had to cancel due to COVID. This is an issue as many of the locals rely on these um, festivals and events. The wine industry has been affected due to the ban on the sale of alcohol, which was implemented by the government in order to reduce um, alcohol-related injuries. But the problem is that many of the tourism attractions in the Western Cape rely on wine tastings as a um, tourism revenue. Even small and medium enterprises were affected as they did not have the capacity to handle COVID-19. It is Many um, scholars believe that technology will help to, with the recovery process of tourism. One such technology is virtual reality or VR. Now, basically, VR is, in terms of tourism, is you sitting in front of your computer or whatever, and you traveling to a location without you physically going there. For example, if you want to go you online tour of um, Table Mountain, 
You can sit on, on the comfort of your chair and view the mountain. Now, VR in tourism has received much attention. Scholars have mainly focused on marketing. This is indicated by the vast number of topics such as second life and presence. Another topic that scholars have um, focused on is sustainability. Although there are many and scholars, it's only Bestra and the Valley that mainly focuses on how VR can contribute to sustainability. As VR has um, progressed, new areas started to emerge. One such an area is VR as a substitute for conventional tourism. This is an this topic is um, an area that I discuss in my article, we are a simple substitute or a new niche, where I say, no, it's not a substitute, but rather a tourism niche in its own right. With the recent COVID-19 outbreak, scholars have started to shift their attention to how we all can contribute to the recovery process of tourism. However, scholars also note that there's a gap in the literature as most of the research has been done on global North countries and only a few um, scholars have focused on global South countries. Therefore, this study plays a critical part. Now, VR provides tourism many benefits and barriers. However, for this section, only the benefits and barriers will be discussed that, um, is, that is associated with South Africa during the COVID pandemic. Okay, the first one is marketing. VR provides tourists a try before buy um, experience, which enables them to first virtually explore a destination such as Table Mountain, then they can decide whether or not they want to come here. This, according to scholars, will play a vital role, especially once COVID has eased or is over, because it might encourage tourists to travel again once to South Africa once COVID has, uh, is over or has eased. Many tourists have become bored during COVID. It is therefore that they have turned to um, VR as a form of entertainment. It is for this reason Many tourism destinations have used VR as a for to entertain tourists. For example, the two oceans aquarium in Cape Town have, um, have enabled tourists to view penguins walking around the aquarium during lockdown. VR is, can also provide tourism revenue. For example, through um, donations. One such an example is the Voortrekker Monument. Tourists can make a financial contribution on the virtual this version of the monument. Our people's health, mental health has been affected. It is therefore argued that VR can provide tourists a temporary escape from COVID. Physical distancing means a distancing between you and me about one to two meters. This is the issue as interaction plays a vital role. However, we all can overcome this by, for example, enabling tourists to be in the same space without them concerning um, themselves in uh, concerning themselves over physical distancing. Safety and security are two vital components. Tourists will not travel if they feel safe, if they do not feel safe. With the recent Omicron discovery. In South Africa, many destinations have closed their borders to South Africa. However, with VR tourists can still visit South Africa from the safety of their home, or VR can also showcase that they do not have to be afraid. However, this has a barrier in terms of loss of, of tourism revenue. So tourists, um, so, so tourists might no longer wish to come. This is a problematic, especially in terms of South Africa, because if fewer tourists come, it will lead to job losses, which then contributes to the unemployment rate, which is about 33, 34% already. The technological issues there are two. The first one is that we have ESCOM. ESCOM is our main electricity supplier. However, they regularly implement load shedding. 
a visa of applicants nightmare. Then, which this is a problem because many VR technology rely on um, electricity, such as the Oculus headgear or the internet. Another issue with ESCOM is that once the power comes back, the surge is so powerful that it will just damage um, technology. The second technological issue is that we lack the funds as well as the skills to purchase this VR technology. Health concerns if the user wears the headgear too long, they might experience nausea or um, headaches, or they might even experience mental health, uh, mental, uh, health if, mental trauma if they visit, for example, Robben Island. Not all destinations are open for tourists. For example, Lake Fondusi is not open for tourists. However, with VR tourists gain access to these sites, the issue is that this might induce, for example, um, a negative change among the Vavenda who regard Lake Fondusi as a sacred site. There's also a huge digital divide in terms of the internet in South Africa. The vast majority of South Africans do not have access to the internet. And this is problematic because they lose out on the opportunities. Now the tourist experience in terms of a conventional tourism experience is um, experience a destination through your five senses, seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing and feeling, but we are only certain senses are yet developed or can be stimulated. Now, the big question is, is VR the Superman we need? No, it cannot save the industry because there are two main reasons. The first issue is, as mentioned, technological issues. We have we do not have the funds to purchase this VR, VR technology, which is really expensive if you go for good quality. The another issue is that we have ESCOM, which we, not, not this weekend, the weekend before that have implemented load shedding. And this is already a frustration. And if tourists cannot experience it, then it's, they won't enjoy the experience. Another the second main issue is the digital divide. South Africans have South Africa has a big digital divide. It is only when once these two key issues has been addressed that we are, might have the opportunity to help um, tourism in South Africa. Then. Thank you so much, Victoria, for keeping time. So once again, our listeners, if you have a question for Victoria, please put it in the chat. And at the end of the presentations, I'll give you an opportunity to ask or I can ask on your behalf. Our next presenter is Mzo Sirai. Um, you have the floor now and you have 10 minutes. Hello, Mzo, are you there? Okay, perfect. Uh, greetings to, uh, to all. Uh, allow me just to share some thoughts uh, on the question of a smart village uh, through culture. It's a concept that we are trying to develop and pilot in one of the villages uh, in the Eastern Cape, uh, is uh, uh, somewhere around uh, Amtata. <clears throat> it is hoped that uh, uh, this concept will make a huge a difference in the context of uh, uh, development and a uh, village uh, tourism. <clears throat> um, it, it is a well-known fact that the rural population is suffering more consequences of livelihood as compared to 
uh, urban areas. Uh, the question of migration from rural uh, to urban areas is uh, directly causing serious socioeconomic difficulties in rural areas as well as um, challenges in uh, urban, urban areas. Actually, migration has actually killed, if you like, village tourism uh, and um, what we call farming, some they call agro-tourism and ruralism in, in South Africa. Uh, the difficulties may be forcing rural right po population uh, to migrate to urban areas in a very big uh, and abnormal way because of uh, poverty and so on. We argue therefore uh, that a better livelihood in rural areas may be may reduce the static effects of poverty, unemployment, and so on, and also causing informal segments and, uh, and social and economic tensions in our context in, in South Africa. Uh, this paper therefore is concerned with the village tourism, economic growth and uh, social justice, and also the question of uh, improvement in living standards of the rural people by providing adequate and quality social uh, services. I argue that, uh, uh, that uh, such rural development may not only improve livelihood in rural areas, but uh, also may reduce migration of rural population in urban areas for employment and uh, reduce pressure on urban infrastructure. I am of the view that uh, utilization of culture and technology, which have uh, proved uh, their potential for development may be used for rural development through a concept referred to as smart village. Smart village concept could be based on indigenous technology, local condition infrastructure, available resources in rural areas and also local demand as well as the potential of export of goods to urban areas. Then, in our view, village and cultural tourism will be realized in the context of South Africa and in the countryside. Allow me to exemplify you know, in the next slides by way of borrowing some uh, you know, uh, concepts, uh, village con you know, models from China. And also I will propose, uh, you know, my, 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 present my proposed model you know, in, in South Africa. Uh, for, for instance, uh, this is a farming tourism uh, where the villagers in the countryside in China really are busy manufacturing, making, uh, you know, tofu. And uh, this concept, in fact, tofu, we, are, we were told that it was first recorded during the Chinese, you know, you know Han Dynasty about 2000 years ago using indigenous you know, technology, if you like, using indigenous knowledge. And that technology, even to date, is still, is still used. If you look, for instance, this is the indigenous technology, which is used to manufacture and make tofu. And this tofu, you'll find it in the shelves, in the market, in the restaurants. Perhaps it's a tofu that we are still we are using in, in, in Africa. And in this village, because of this sort of um, indigenous technology and the rural you know, tourism, is attracting many tourists in, in China with the view to contribute to the development of the people on the ground. Again, this is a school in the countryside, in the village, in the rural area, which is busy you know, producing, you know, making paper with the view to develop, to put bread on the tables of many people in the countryside. In other words, this kind of business is not the monopoly of the middle class or of the urban areas. It is in the countryside. In other words, villagers in the countryside are contributing to the development of the economy of, of the country. Also, in also, also the question of village tourism becomes a reality in this village. 
again the same thing in entrepreneurship you know in in, in the village in, in the village in the red area again you could see here that the tourists and the entrepreneurs are interacting you know in, in the village making um, you know you know what they are making with a view to contribute uh, to the to the development to the development of the economy for the villagers as well perhaps uh, as the as 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 the, as the country again here we see for instance uh, the tourists you know this means that you yeah, that you see there you know sort of uh, uh, you know um, with 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 the with the with the with the, with the, with the entrepreneurs and uh, showcasing the, the sweets that they've actually produced in the countryside. What is interesting though, is that when you go to the supermarket, when you go to the shops, you see these sweets in the, in, in the, in the, in the supermarket coming all the way from the, from the, from the, from the, from the, from the villages. And now again, this is what they refer to as their traditional wedding ceremony in the countryside. And all these activities are used as, as, as a strategy to attract tourists in order to ensure that the villagers are benefited from the revenue that is brought by, by, by the tourists in, in, the, in their villages. In other words, tourism here is not the monopoly of the middle class. Everybody is actually benefiting, even those who are in the countryside. For instance, you can see now, this is your village. You see the number of tourists, you know, on the ground. I can imagine, actually, when we were there, we were in this village where we, 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 we witnessed number of restaurants and uh, that we used to ensure that when we leave, we leave bread on the table for the people in, in, those, in, th in those villages. Now, um, this is what they call cultural entrepreneurship, farming tourism. In China, you can see how farming has been turned into, into tourism, you know, in the countryside. I've never seen this in my village where I come from in the Eastern Cape. It's a huge land, but that land is not utilized. According instead, we see a huge migration of my people from rural areas to urban areas with a view to get job when they come here, they are disappointed because there's no job. They end up being you know, homeless and so on, if you like. Now, this is a proposed model that we are proposing, you know, for, for South Africa that we are trying to implement a pilot somewhere in, in, in the cave, what we refer to a mixed use you know, segment, where all the facilities are put together for the benefit of the, of, 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 of everybody, not only for the benefit of the villagers, for the benefit even of the urban areas, because if we succeed in developing this, there will be a linkage between this village and the urban areas, if you like, the linkage between Amtata and this village, the linkage between you know, this village and the Deben, the linkage between this village and the Johannesburg. This is what is referred in literature rural urban linkages, which is also promoted uh, by UNESCO. This is another model. This is another you know, you know, model. In fact, the same model, uh, but uh, another design, you know, when it is translated in, 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 into reality. So this is the model that we are promoting to move with these facilities uh, to our villages where uh, as I speak, there is a huge land, but that land is not utilized. We are saying we cannot have a question where we keep on calling for the land and when the land is available, is not utilized. Our view, once this happened, you know, South Africa will never be the same again. I'm talking about the right areas. Now, what are the benefits? Some young people, you, you know, need to wind up now. Some of the villages might actually, you know, beginning to move back to the, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, smart villages and started their, their, their businesses in their area. In fact, we have the view that um, 
This will create a better life for rural citizens and also attract investment, if you like, and boost you know, village you know, tourism industry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mzo, for that enlightening presentation. I'm sure there will be questions uh, in the chat or later on uh, during the plenary. So I would encourage you, if you want to put your question in the chat, to kindly uh, do so. Um, is uh, Saima in the room already? Saima, Sarah, Wasif? OK. So we'll move on to Sonam um, uh, to do your presentation. Uh, so Sonam, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. You have uh, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, namaste, sir. Uh, I'm Sonam from India, Delhi. And uh, I'm the student of Center for African Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University. And uh, I would like to offer my apology that I don't have the PPT. So I will present my presentation through my own paper. Uh, so my topic of uh, presentation is a uh, reopening of tourism and amalgamation of digitalization in Kenya. Kenya, uh, so I'm going to present now. Kenya is one of the few places that offers such extraordinary opportunity to view exotic wildlife uh, in its natural habitat. This is a reason of the dramatic contrast and extraordinary wildlife on the display with the landscape of the great beauty and variety. The you can view the wide variety of the wildlife hiking through the Hell's Gate National Park, the picnic area above the gorge offer panoramic view of the towers and the zors. Uh, this hike is highly recommended for anyone who wishes to get off the beaten track and head into the truly unique Kenyan landscape. Um, Kenya is amalgamation of the multiple places which uh, uh, which uh, allure the person. Uh, in the form of the tourism. Uh, so Mombasa is the largest city on the Kenya coast, but if you want to hang out there in a wide area of the restaurant, club, pubs, disco to choose from in the city, Nairobi. Uh, while in the Nairobi, be sure to visit the city market. So there are multiple, uh, there is amalgamation of the modernization and the natural use uh, you can find in a Kenya. Uh, indeed, the very word safari was invented in a Kenya, where in the Kiswali, it means journey. So the, uh, being, uh, the term safari came uh, from the um, uh, um, uh, language uh, Kiswali. Uh, uh, the boundless uh, wildness and, and the big game of this region has a long attracted adventure seeker from all over the um, uh, globe. But despite of all, uh, the basic point is, which I'm going to narrate here, the tourism has become the one of the prominent source of the profit generation because Kenya is a country which um, um, belongs from the uh, developing countries, uh, a kind of the country which are um, uh, started to grow now and the economical issues, financial issues, these are the certain issues are correlated with the country. So Kenya is a country which has a various segment of the ge geographical diversity and the rich natural beauty, uh, which is enough for alluring and uh, the any tur uh, tourism industry. And here tourism is a significant part of the national economy. Uh, so, uh, and due to the emergence uh, and the upsurge of the, but uh, amid of all, due to the upsurge and the emergence of the pandemic, this area has affected severely so. Now the opening of the, this sector is utmost required due to the pure economic condition. Country and the opening up of this sector is now needed to be the balanced measure approach. So amid of the new phase of the tourism journey with the fighting of the challenges and the complex situation, there is the need of the long-term change in a travel behavior, which need immense awareness. So now it's a time when the government has to introduce new policies through which the consistency of the tourism industry can be maintained with the help of the awareness tool. So there is a need of the integration of the use digital con content I use digital content to make aware people about the new rule and the regulation which have been nationally and internationally implemented in the sphere of the tourism. So there is a need of the digital amalgamation, amalgamation of the uh, uh, of um, uh, digital amalgamation of for making all the regulation uh, policy available and it will be required required financial support. So the government of the country should provide uh, all the support to the uh, industry. Uh, so that amid challenges, the flow of the tourism can be restored. 
the coronavirus covid-19 pandemic has triggered an unprecedented crisis in the tourism economy given the immediate and the even shock to the sector so digitalization has transformed the way business is done across the nation providing exceptional opportunity for the value creation consequently business leaders across all sector are grappling with the strategic implication of this transformation uh, in the uh, sphere of the tourism tourism information communication technology are important tool for identifying changes and the trend that allow decision for grappling to the tourism development opportunity travel and tourism is heavily information based and would uh, it and would benefit immen immensely from such ict for kenya to be the competitive tourism destination uh, it is important to explore the extent to which the use of the modern technology has impacted kenya's tourism industry uh, so so kenya uh, tourism uh, Uh, digit, uh industry is um, quite affected with the digitalization initiative how this can be augmented for the future um uh, number one to capture travel and the tourism knowledge and the ex uh, experiences from the both supply and the demand perspective to utilize the ict in the interpretation of the tourism product to undertake the digitalized mapping of the tourism resource in kenya to develop the strategic digital marketing platform for kenyan uh, tourism to develop the system to fight against the false information in tourism industry in kenya to develop uh, to develop an integrated destination management system for the industry experience uh, experiential knowledge and the lesson learned has been getting captured using the variety of tools are now available at the present time through the social media sector the tourism industry the, those people they are associated from the tourism industry they are trying to express they are trying to upload information through the several kind of the social media uh, platform and through the use of the um uh, 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 digitalized tool like the reel instagram facebook uh, twitter and so on thank you sir my presentation is over oh thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much uh, for keeping time um i still call on uh, saima is saima in the room or the other co-authors no Okay so we 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 have plenty of time in the plenary now to have our discussions i'm not seeing anything in the chat uh is there anyone who has a question for our three presenters uh, victoria who presented uh, her research on uh, virtual reality yeah uh, then we have the second presenter mzo who's presented uh, on smart uh, villages and then sonam on digitization in kenya anybody who has a question awfully quiet in this room <laughs> anybody who has something before i ask i have a couple of questions to the presenters yeah <clears throat> hello yes oh hello hi jensen yeah i uh, <clears throat> i had a question to the uh, very interesting subject about virtual reality mm -hmm. uh um is a very important uh, topic i think and this was good to have it uh, presented um so um you are are you considering the use of virtual reality as a kind of um means of mediation for an extreme situation or uh what are the actually the uh, what are what are what is actually the challenges the uh, the negative impacts of using uh virtual reality when it comes to tourism and particular cultural tourism um do you think that this is something that uh, still should be explored further and um uh, explored in a way that uh, you could develop different models and 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 uh, authorization of the use of virtual reality etc when it comes to particular um assets of uh, cultural nature do you understand what i asking okay, i have an idea okay 
Um, it, it is really an interesting topic of, about thinking maybe um, VR should be still, you know, explored, but also in a sense, we're moving away from VR. We are now going to like newer technologies such as mixed reality. So yes, we should still explore VR because it's still there. And in terms of the negatives, there's really a lot. This, this was just like in terms of um, South Africa, but most of this mentioned in my um, presentation also applies elsewhere. Can I have a follow-up? Um, okay. Uh, but um, <clears throat> you, you think that um, I mean, when it comes to marketing, somehow very much uh, learning from marketing is that uh, virtual reality might be a kind of appetizer that might create a new demand for people to really to uh, uh, experience uh, the actual reality. Um, what do you think about uh, this, this opportunity for uh, this uh, effect of virtual reality? Um. Okay, I don't understand the question, but it's okay. Uh, okay, the way I understand it is um, that this approach has been successful. Um, it is actually indicated in the literature that we are thus encouraged tourists to travel to the actual destination. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Uh, any other question for Victoria? I have one question. Is there anybody else in the plenary? Okay, the Victoria, you mentioned um, there was a health concern uh, in the column for barrier for virtual reality. And you mentioned a few examples because on the positive side, you're saying that it will be good for, especially people now that are at home, they can't travel. And sometimes visuals are good. It helps people with mental, you know, the mentality. So why would you consider that a barrier? Because um, VR provides a benefit and a barrier. So there's no, it is a, it's difficult to say because in the one sense, VR provides this benefit where it helps you. But on the other sense, it becomes a barrier because now you can basically explore any site. And uh, if you visit a dark tourism site, okay, so in a sense, it can become a barrier in both sense because now you escape COVID, but then you visit, let's say, Robben Island. So now you are also experiencing this mental um, trauma. I'm explaining myself right. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I just have one follow-up question. You mentioned yeah. about load shedding and I've been to Joburg and it's really horrible. Uh, I'm not sure how that would work uh, with uh, virtual reality because sometimes you might be glued into a destination and then all of a sudden there's load shedding. Um, and then you have to automatically log, log, it logs off and it's for some hours and so the interest uh, how do you think you can balance that with the current load sharing, shedding in South Africa? Um, you can't really. But okay, it, you can't if you go for the very expensive VR. But if you can also explore VR, uh, okay, load shedding is also, uh, you can also use, um, let's say, Google Cardboard, this handmade phone um, HMD. So then you can still explore the destination through your phone. So if you have load shedding, then you can go, uh, you can just put on this um, Google Cardboard or I can't remember the other brands, but it also enables you to view a destination. Okay. So that's how you can overcome load shedding. Load shedding in South Africa. I hope it's not going to go up to 2063. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. If there's no other question for Victoria, are there other questions for our second presenter, Mzo, who presented on smart villages? Uh, 
Uh, I do have a question um, uh, for the presenter. Uh, you, you mentioned it's very interesting. Uh, you want to promote smart villages through culture in South Africa, and you gave a case study for China. Uh, I was just wondering the environmental aspects, because I think you are looking at a socioeconomic aspect of uh, developing smart villages. Uh, but did you consider environmental aspect? Because some of the uh, premises or the products that you're trying to propose, I think will have some impact on the environment. How do you um, propose to be able to mitigate that? Thank you. In fact, that is, that is a package. Uh, with, you cannot talk of a development uh, uh, without uh, the environment. However, my focus for now was on the question of move, moving culture to the center of development without you know, undermining uh, you know, um, other, 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 other sectors. Okay. So the question of environment is, is key in the model that we are proposing. Yes, because I would imagine if you're going to put a shopping mall in a yes. village, you know, predominantly shopping malls belong to the urban area. So it is going to, uh, you know, unless the community comes and they agree, the aesthetics of the rural area is going to be altered significantly by such a huge development. And so that is my concern. Uh, some of the products are very good, uh, but I was just thinking the larger development, you know, I think uh, all stakeholders need to be on board uh, to be able to, to, to have such a project going on. And I think you're correct. Our view is that uh, a project of this nature should be you know, facilitated or driven by what we call coalition, coalition committee, which, is, which involves all, all the stakeholders, if you like, the academic sector, the private sector, the public sector, civil society, traditional leadership, and so on. In my team, for instance, I work with uh, civil engineers, I work with project surveyors, I work with um, uh, town planners, I work with economists, I work with uh, people from different to ensure that uh, there is no loophole in the model that we are, we are proposing. Okay. okay, thank you. Is there any other question for Izo? Okay, is there a question for our last presenter, uh, Sonam? Yes, Victoria has a question. Yes. Um, why not use technology? Because your title is reopening. Why not use re uh, why not use uh, your topic topic is reopening of tourism? Why not use um, technology such as VR? Why don't why don't you also focus us on how VR can help to open tourism again? in Kenya. Sonam, that's your question. Sonam, are you still there? Sonam? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes. Yes, did you hear the question from Victoria? Also, oh, please, pardon, please repeat the question, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Your, your topic is about reopening. Why not also focus on, for example, on um, virtual reality and how it might help to open tourism again in Kenya? There is a of why she's so sorry. Victoria, I'm very sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Okay, um, uh, is it possible for you to chat? Can, can you access the chat, uh, Sonam? Oh, sure, 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 yeah. sure. Okay, so maybe she can, she can put it in the chat and meanwhile I can ask you my question. So please, Victoria, mm -hmm. just put it in the chat. She can read it and then I can ask the question meanwhile to save time. Uh, okay. You mentioned about uh, digitization uh, mm -hmm. in rural sector. How do you propose that is going to be in, in Kenya? Have you traveled to Kenya before? Are you doing your research in Kenya or? So are you asking to me, right? Yes, have we traveled to Kenya before? Actually, sir, I have been pursuing my PhD on the Kenya. Uh, actually, yeah. my topic is, hello? Yes, I can hear you. 
Uh, my topic is political transformation and role of media. So that I'm, uh, I have been pursuing uh, the role of different kind of the media involvement in the political transformation. So mm -hmm. amid of uh, my research, uh, so that's why. Okay, so now you are doing the topic on tourism or politics? No, no, I'm not talking the tourism in the politics and the political transformation. I'm working on the issue of mm -hmm. the political transformation, not on the tourism transformation. So. Yeah, but I'm asking how, how, uh, how are you proposing the digitization because your topic is on tourism. Your topic is reopening of tourism and um, amalgamation of digitization. So how so does Because that... of that, it's the time of the corona periods. All over the world is affected by the corona uh, issues. So mm -hmm. in uh, so uh, those countries like the India and a Kenya kind of the country, they have the not a very um, uh, strong financial background. That they are the majority of the people are belonging from the marginal section. They are struggling for the, their um, economical resources. So in such a situation, tourism industries has a very great impact in the, the through which the uh, different kind of the employment is are there, different kind of the source of income are in um, incomes are related from these sector. So in such way, um, uh, due to the close of the uh, tourism uh, because of the uh, corona issues, the majority of people are suffering. So uh, few people are uh, through through the support of the government, through the policies of the government, through you know, few industries are uh, they are very much keen to interest interested to reopen of the tourism industry. So they are promoting uh, like uh, sometimes uh, around of the one year back. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I have attended uh, some uh, online kind of the safari tourism kind of things where the diff different kinds of the documentary was shown. There different kind of the uh, natural and the uh, Wildlife um, creatures are the uh, Kenyans are shown there. So the kind of things, um, kind of through the virtual uh, kind of the tool, through technology, through digitalization, this sphere can be promoted and um, uh, and progressed in a future and a present time also. Okay, so so can you be able to see the chat? Are we be able to see the question that Victoria is asking? So why do you not focus on the virtual reality and how it will reopen? Actually, I'm focusing. Uh, I didn't mention the word, but uh, uh, sorry for that. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to say that a virtual reality has a very important, a very key uh, key role in the promotion of the tourism industry in a present time. Because in the such a time when the kind of the era of the virus is going on, where through the virtual techniques, through the social media, uh, the promotion of the tourism is quite possible. Does that answer your question, Victoria? Yes, okay. Uh, any other questions for our presenter? Any other questions? I'll just do a final call for Saima, just in case she joined in, uh, because we still have some nine minutes. Saima, is Saima there, Sarah? Okay, so it looks like uh, they are not here available. So um, if we don't have any other question, um, we still have about eight minutes uh, before we log on for the lunch break. So I thank you very much for your participation and thank you very much to our presenters. You could still be able to, to link up with other presenters in other uh, breakout rooms. So thank you very much.